In this video, we'll talk about the concepts of bioreactors. And this video is dedicated for school students. If you are a neat UG aspirant, this video is also useful for you. Generally, biology is taught in an informative and boring fashion in school. So I took the concepts of biology from the NCRT book and displayed it in form of an interactive animation. Stay tuned till the end of this video because you are going to learn a lot. Bioreactors are reaction vessels where you can control a biological reaction and control all the parameters over time. This would lead to production of a biologically relevant product, for example, an enzyme. You must be wondering why it is at all necessary. Let me tell you why. So in your lab, you can possibly produce insulin and that insulin might be required for a person who is suffering from diabetes. So in order to prepare insulin, you will clone the insulin gene in an expression vector. You will transfect that into a bacteria. You will grow the bacteria. When the bacteria grows, you can extract insulin out of it. Theoretically, very simple and totally doable. But think about several thousand people in India who requires insulin. The demand is huge and it's not possible to create that quantity of insulin in the laboratory, right? So the production scale has to be increased. And that's why you need bioreactors to produce these kind of biologically relevant products in huge amount. So in small scale, you might need a 1.1 to 1, uh, 5 liters of any bacterial culture. Then in industrial scale, using a bioreactor, you can generate even 1000 liters of culture. And that's really important to scale up the production. Moral of the story, bioreactors are for large scale production. Generally, they are relevant for the industry. This video is sponsored by Unacademy. If you are worried about NIT UG, Unacademy get you covered because they have lectures, notes, doubt clearing sessions, which would help you in your preparation journey. They have notes and classes for several entrance examination, including NIT UG, where different uh, where educators from different parts of India help you in your preparation. Now for NEET UG, there is a practice batch for NEET UG 2022 and this batch is starting from March 23rd, 2022. So if you need any information regarding this, you can see this phone number in the screen, you can call them and you, they would provide you all the information. So the role uh, so for the link for the enrollment is provided in the description. You can practice MCQ in this batch and also give mock test. Another batch, which is Enthuse batch for NEET 2023, is starting from March 23 as well. And this batch is long term batch. And again, if you need any information regarding this batch, you can call this number and you can enroll yourself. All the link is provided in the description box. So check it out. So you should register if you are preparing for NEET examination. Now let's get back to our discussion. We were talking about bioreactors. Let's talk about how does bioreactors look like. So this is kind of like a layout of a stirred tank bioreactor. You might have encountered the picture of this stirred tank bioreactor in your NCRT book. So in this bioreactor, you have a huge vessel where you can put culture broth or culture media where you would grow your bacterial cells or mammalian cells or any kind of cells. Then you have a flat bladed impeller. So this is basically something which rotates with the help of a motor. Then there is there should be a sterile air inlet. You can see here and there should be a pH controlling unit which monitors the pH of this uh, media over time. And there should be inlets for pH adjust adjustments you, you can like put alkali or bases to increase or let's say to acid to decrease the pH. So overall you can understand all the reactions would happen in a very controlled fashion in this particular bioreactor. You can relate this particular diagram with the NCRT diagram and don't forget the labels. Now let's talk about the sparged starred tank bioreactor. Sparged 
star tank bioreactor is a bit different from the normal star tank bioreactor because here sterile air is purged in the reactor. This increases the surface area for oxygen transfer and that is really helpful. Here you bubble the, uh, I mean the bubbling process actually increase the oxygen transfer area. It kind of helps in the yield. Now bioreactors are reaction vessel and that is totally clear to us by now. We also learned what is the difference between a simple stirred tank bioreactor versus a sparged uh, stirred tank bioreactor. So here in the bioreactor you put some raw materials and that gets converted to a specific biological product. Raw materials could be microbial cells, plant cells, animal cells or even human cells. And the specific biological product could be diverse. For example, antibiotics, enzymes, hormones, peptides, metabolites, all of these can be relevant biological pro uh, products. A bioreactor provides an optimal condition for achieving the desired product by providing oxygen, temperature, pH, substrate, vitamins, and salts. So all these conditions are provided in the bioreactor and that's why optimal growth can be achieved. Now, when we talk about bioreactor, we should also understand the operation regime by which the bioreactor can work. One such operation regime is a continuous process in which you enter the media or the substrate and with another outlet, you take out the product in time to time. So, you have a sequential input and sequential output. So, you using a pump you pump in the media in the reaction vessel and from the reaction vessel you take out the product time to time and this is known as continuous process this allows the reactor to run for a very long time and give fruitful products there are many other reaction regimes by which these bioreactors can operate but this is quite beyond the syllabus of ncrt but anyway this continuous process is the most fruitful one if you want to check out that Click on the link in the i button. Anyway, bioreactors are very similar to washing machines because in washing machine you have so many operation regimes, right? So in the bioreactors as well, you have different operation regimes for different needs or necessities. So now you understand it's not at all difficult. Now in the next video, we'll be talk we'll be talking about upstream and downstream processes because this is another concept that school students always confuse so stay tuned for the next video do let me know in the comment how you like my video you can get notes and flashcards in my facebook channel you can revise using my dynamic flashcards don't forget to like share and subscribe you can support my channel on patreon if you wish to connect you can uh, get me in the social media using the following links. All the links are in the description. My courses are present in Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform. Using a code AP10, you can get 10% discount. See you on next video. Thank you.